everyone. This is Kat Kahn from Bay County Public Library. And this time I'm here to talk about Will Eisner, who was a comics artist. And we are celebrating Will Eisner Week, the week of March 1st through 7th. Um, his birthday is actually on March 6th. Why are we celebrating Will Eisner? Well, he was a pioneer in the comics industry. Um, he got started in the late 30s right along with the same guys who created Superman and Batman, uh, Stan Lee and um, all those other people. Um, and he's uh, most famous for his character that he created, the spirit. And he created this in uh, late 1939. Um, I read the old the reprints that were done back in the 60s. So when I was eight years old, I was reading the spirit. So. That was something that I really enjoyed. And then um, as time went on, I learned a little bit more about him. And there's also a comics industry award called the Will Eisner Awards um, for the best comics in various categories. It's almost like the Oscars of the comics industry. And I was a judge for that, um, first librarian judge. Um, for the Will Eisner Awards, and so I feel kind of a connection there. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2005, like a couple of months before I would have been able to meet him. So that makes me a little sad. Anyway, this is what Will Eisner looked like in 2004. And uh, he is part of that whole generation, like I said, of the uh, the early um, comics um, writers and creators um, who helped form DC and Marvel and um, created a lot of those characters that we all know and read and see on TV and movies today. But what I really wanted to focus on, his connection to what we are calling STEAM or STEM, the science, technology, engineering, and math, and arts. That's what STEAM is. Uh, because during World War II, along with a lot of other comics artists, he also joined the military. But uh, what he did, instead of being sent off to fight like other soldiers, he worked to create manuals to help the GIs learn how to do things like uh, fix flat tires on their trucks and how to load them properly and all kinds of things. And um, he did it in comic book format. And then after the war, he continued uh, by working on a magazine that was called PS Magazine, the, Be uh, the Preventive Maintenance Monthly, which actually continued publication into the 1970s. Now, when you look at some of the artwork in the PS Monthly, this is a compilation of, uh, it's called the Best of the Preventive Maintenance Monthly. And his art style and some of the things that he did um, reflect that time. So he had a character that he called Joe Dope. In this case, Joe is um, a not very bright kind of guy who goofs up a lot and he has to learn from other people how to fix things and in the process of showing how he learns how to do things the comics actually show what the soldiers should do so for this one it's um, how to properly load a trailer truck with the heavy stuff so you can just see um, with um, some humor and all the, the usual comics sound effects and stuff on the page. This is how he taught people how to do things. And what was kind of interesting was there was a female character in the um, comics and she looked like the stereotype, you know, busty blonde. She tended to be the smartest person on the base. So score one for Will Eisner on that.
He also, during the Vietnam War, did a manual for um, maintaining the M M16 rifle in comic book format again. So he continued doing this, like I said, uh, right through the 70s. And all that was, you know, making, repairing, fixing, you know, just doing things and using comics to teach how to do it. And what we have seen in the last 10 years, especially, um, is a, like a real boom in STEM and STEAM comics that are created for all different ages. And I just have a, a small sampling here of some of the things that uh, we have in the library that I feel kind of owe something to what Will Eisner did, you know, like I said, during World War II and, and after that. Because making is, you know, something that helps, you know, people learn by doing. And uh, I think that it's a lot of fun, too, and why I do a lot of different crafts. So along with that, we have something like How Tunes, which is in our library. And in the course of telling a fun story about this um, pair of siblings, they use everyday materials, plastic soda bottles, um, scrap plastic, paper, and other things to make all kinds of cool devices. We also have even how to teach math. So this is the teaching aspect that Eisner had in, in the PS Monthly. Um, this one is Solution Squad, and all the stories teach different aspects of math, like uh, square roots, uh, the um, uh, prime numbers, the train problem. I remember that one, that word problem. If, if train A starts and goes at this speed, and half an hour later, train B, and so on, you know, when will they collide? Uh, that is actually, he shows how to solve that in one of the stories here. I wish I had this when I was in fifth grade. Reading with Pictures is an older anthology, but this one covers everything from language arts to math to science and history. And again, using the comic format to teach different concepts and is a lot of fun too. We also have things that explain science such as the science comic series from first second, and they cover all kinds of topics from things like rockets to volcanoes to crows and spiders, <laughs> all kinds of things. First second also does maker comics. These, I think, really express the spirit of the um, PS Monthly. In um, this one especially, this is called Fix a Car. And it actually shows in a comic book format things like how to change a flat tire, how to do preventive maintenance, even how to change your own oil. And all in a comic book format about a, a bunch of high school kids who are learning to do this um, before they get and some of them actually own their own vehicles. And the teacher, this is what I like, the teacher is a middle-aged woman, not a guy. But this should be, I think this should be like required reading for any teenager who is first getting their license and getting their first car because this has a lot of great information. Even if you don't change your own oil, just to learn why and how you know, it's done might give you a little better appreciation for the things that you need to do to keep your car going. But like I said, the Maker Comics, I think, come in a direct line from Will Eisner. 
and we have um, some books about him that you can find in our library. We have one biography uh, that is in our um, juvenile collection here. So you'll find this in the biography section. And it uh, talks about his life and his work. We also have uh, Will Eisner, A Dreamer's Life in Comics. And this is in our adult biography collection. So you can read up about him. We also have the, the two um, spirit comics that I showed before. These are in the young adult graphic novel collection. This one is um, the spirit and it's uh, written by Darwin Cook. So he's using Will Eisner's character and, and has kind of his own take on it. Um, this one here is the best of Will Eisner's The Spirit. And so this collects some of Eisner's original comics that he created. These are all things that you will be able to find in our library. And I'm just hoping that some people will do this and just you know think about Will Eisner and the, all the pioneering work that he did and appreciate the comics that we have. There's even a little thing that you can find on the internet. And if you just Google Will Eisner, father of the graphic novel, it's a little eight page comic and I just printed it out, but it, you can read it online so it's free to read to just give you some information about him. And the Wikipedia article about him is actually pretty good too. And we'll also give you some sources that you want if you want to continue to research a little bit more about him, you can use the bibliography at the end of the Wikipedia article to um, find more information about Will Eisner, and I hope some of you will. Now, in the spirit of making and teaching, uh, we're going to do a very simple little craft. This is a little pinwheel. And it's made from just everyday type of materials. I used a wooden chopstick and an old cork, a push pin, and a piece of paper. And we have kits put together with the directions. And the directions are taken from how tunes. And it's just a kind of a neat thing here. This one is the comic book page spread. My directions just take the actual pictures so the, um, of the, the paper um, so that you can you know, follow the directions. But it makes a very simple craft, um, but it's a lot of fun. The kit provides you with the um, chopstick already dug into the cork because I felt like that was kind of a little hard thing to do and I don't want younger kids especially to be using an awl or a pair of scissors and digging into the cork and possibly having an accident so I put that together already. Um, there is a paper that's already marked with the, the markings that you need and a little push pin. All you need is a pair of scissors. So, in that kit, you're going to find the paper, and it's already marked, like I said, with the, um, the diagonal lines. They're, they're about two inches long. They don't go all the way to the center. There's a little dot in the center, and that's where you're going to put the, uh, push the pin through. And then there are little bitty marks about a quarter inch in from the corner on each corner. And that's all you need to connect the, the paper. So, what you do is take your scissors and you're going to carefully cut right along that two inch line as straight and neat as you can. Make sure you don't go beyond the end of the pencil mark, okay? And you're just going to do each one of these. And it really does work best if, if you're making um, for yourself to make sure that you use a four inch square. You don't want it any bigger and you don't really want it any smaller. 
you just cut so you've got these four parts like that. And then you go to those little, there's a little, you can see little bitty teeny tiny lines, like I said, they're about a quarter inch in, and you're not going to cut all the way across, no more than halfway. Just a little cut on each of these little marks. And then what's neat is that you just fold these corners down and just fit that little slit right into the inner end of the next one like so. And you're just going to do each one like that. And it really is enough to hold the paper in. Okay. So there's your paper, just like that on the back. So it's that, that little quarter inch or so is just enough to, to hold it in. Then you've got your cork on the chopstick. Take your push pin and you want to just carefully just stick it right through that mark in the center of the paper. You don't need to push the pin all the way to the paper. And you're going to push the pin into about the center part on the end of the cork. And don't push it all the way in. You want to leave um, space for the paper to spin. And that is it. So here you have the pinwheel. Nice and simple. And just needs a little bit of a breeze. You can even just walk with it, and as you walk, it will spin. It's so simple, and yet so much fun. And you could have, if a whole bunch of you do it, you have like a little parade of people holding their pinwheels, or as the picture in the how uh book showed it, you could actually make a whole field of them in your yard. And then just have a whole bunch of pinwheels blowing. So that is just a little bit of fun that you can have anytime, but especially during World Eisner Week. And think of him and making and doing fun stuff with comics. Thanks.